One of the most important things we're going to be working on this year is substituting numbers into equations and to expressions, finding answers, simplifying those. And we're going to practice that today and for the rest of the week and for the rest of the year. Yesterday we reviewed integers. Now we need to practice using those integers in formulas and expressions and simplifying them. Um, this year, we're going to be learning about slope. Remember last year you used constant proportionality and we graphed those lines. This year we're going to talk about how quickly that graph grows. And in order to do that, we need to be able to substitute numbers in for x and find out the value of y. So we have a big job ahead of us. And do you remember, a lot of times in math we hear you say, when am I ever going to use this? You are going to use this. You are going to use this all year long. You are going to use this in the high school. If you are planning to go to college, you are going to use it on the ACT and the SAT, those college entrance exams. You're going to use it in college. And whether or not you go to college, you will use it for the rest of your life. And here's an example. I did some landscaping over the summer and I had a big empty space that I needed to fill with mulch. Mulch comes in a yard, what they call a yard, and it covers 27 cubic feet. That's volume. I had to find the volume of my space so that I knew exactly how much mulch I needed. In order to do that, didn't I substitute numbers in? I sure did. I used the volume formula. I found the length, the width, and the depth, or what we would normally call the height of the mulch I needed. And when I multiplied all those numbers together, I got 80. And if one yard covers 27 cubic feet, I divide that 80 by 27, and it looks like I needed almost three yards. This is consumer math. This is how you know you've ordered the right amount of stuff and you're not relying on someone else to tell you. You have used formulas for ages. You have found area. You have found perimeter. You have found volume. You've used percent formulas. This year, you're going to use even more. We're going to do slope. We're going to find the value of the slope of the line. We are going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Oh, there's so much more. So let's get really good at this and let's practice. To start, would you please respond in the discussions by giving us an example of a formula you remember, either from seventh grade, sixth grade, elementary school. And if you can't think of one of those, ask your parents, ask a guardian, ask a grandparent. Do you know of a formula that you use? Because this is stuff that you will use for the rest of your life. Good luck. I can't wait to see what you say.